The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, Swedish original movie review. Following the events of the second movie, Lisbeth Salander is now awaiting trial for the murders of the second movie. And we yet again start with a bit of a last scene on sequence, but it doesn't feel so much as... It doesn't really feel like it's saying, you know, if you didn't watch the last several movies, this is what happened, as much as, in case you may have forgotten some of the details, this is what happened. I really wouldn't recommend starting with any movie in the series other than the first one. The psychiatrist from the second movie is, he returns and is given a larger role, and he is very important to determining the future of Lisbeth. Blomqvist, of course, continues to, you know, fight for her, and he's now trying to unravel the conspiracy that Steve Larsen suddenly decided they should be part of this trilogy. Along the way, he interrogates or interviews Richard Nixon, and he should be careful because one of the people working, you know, for one of the people involved in this conspiracy is a dead ringer for. Van Damme. The theme of men hating women, men of authority abusing their power to hurt women, is yet again explored and this time personified. The sort of all-encompassing man who hates women is, and this is really not a spoiler, the psychiatrist. And this works really well because it does somewhat put an, a definitive face on that. You know, and as you find out more about Lisbeth, you realize that he was one of the first to truly, you know, abuse her and get away with it. Her past is delved into some more, oh, perhaps, and, you know, he becomes kind of the, the main antagonist of the entire trilogy. You know, the, the person that you really want and really need to see brought to justice, and that really... You know, the, the whole trilogy thing, you have to return to the past and learn something about, and, you know, this is where someone you maybe didn't realize was a bad guy. It's definitely a bad guy, and they have to be brought down now. We get some more details of Lisbeth's past, and, you know, it's, it's more than we got in the second one, I'd say, but... Still not entirely satisfactory. I would say that they don't give too much information, and that's good. It's a real problem when, you know, a backstory just... It, it would take away all the mystery, and they don't do that. But I do also think that we're left just hungry and, you know, too hungry, you know. The mystery is, you know, I'm not entirely sure there is a mystery in this one, not particularly. It's kind of, you know, there's the conspiracy and you hope that they will bring them down, but it's made pretty clear almost immediately several of the people who are behind it and it just kind of becomes you know, can these reporters actually gather enough evidence and can they track it down because it is a conspiracy, you know, nobody knows about it other than the people who are, you know, whose mouths are sealed shut. The acting is again phenomenal. 
Nomi Rapace is brilliant as Elizabeth Salander. Just fantastic. And she has some real nice subtleties to her performance in this as well. This is also the one where, as you might have seen in the trailer, she dons the full goth look. You know, before she was uh, she was cocoon, now full-fledged butterfly. She is just yeah, and whether you think she looks utterly ridiculous or that it's really empowering or something, you know, that's up for the viewer to decide. I don't know, I would say at least it didn't stop me from taking her seriously, or the movie as a whole. The hearing, I suppose it is, at the, you know, as a sort of precursor to the actual trial or something, I suppose, is a very important conflict in the film, and it is really good. It's one of the most compelling things in this. We still have a very gritty film, very violent, brutal, and disturbing, and sexual perversion is still, excuse me, very much part of it. Blondie is still here, and he has a name now, Ronald Niederman. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with Blondie. It's slightly less effeminate. He... I don't know, he's killing people for some reason, and, I don't know, I guess people connected with what happened in the second movie, sort of, but it just, it didn't really feel, I don't know, I couldn't quite follow his motivation. And he continues to just be, you know, an excessive badass, sort of. And then there's how he sort of disappears for no reason for part of this film. Yeah. There are other parts where the plotting is just kind of... I don't know, it just felt like they couldn't think of a way to make it work. So they just said, well, that's just how it is. And you're just left wondering, how did it... Why, you know? Salander yet again gets help from her hacker buddy who this time looks an awful lot like Jack Sparrow for some reason. The score is still excellent. It's still a very compelling and gripping film, but like the second one, it just does not live up to the first one. And you know, some of it is just the strange new directions that it's taken in. You know, the first movie was very just straightforward, very realistic and very credible. It didn't really add anything that made it feel strange. But at the same time, it's very edgy and, you know, it's, you know, it pulls no punches. But then the second one introduces these aspects that make it less realistic, and then in this one those return, and this one also brings in the whole conspiracy thing which, you know, conspiracy stories are fine. I don't have a problem with them. I just, I didn't see that at all in the first movie. Not, not really. And I'm not going to go into any more detail because I don't want to spoil the first movie in this video. I suppose that pretty well covers it. It's, it's a good conclusion. And if you like the first one and you have watched the second one, I would definitely say to also watch this one, especially because the second one wraps up nothing. And this one wraps up slightly more than nothing. And it certainly does offer a pretty good conclusion to just our, you know, few leads. You know, Blomqvist and especially Salander. Should perhaps also note that while the acting tends to be quite good, 
Blomqvist's reporter friend, female reporter friend, she really, she's gotten really good at looking concerned, and she wants to show that off. She, she really wants us to know that she practiced looking concerned. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.